What is going on, people? It's Elijah from my charge back. Before we get started, please don't forget to click a like and subscribe. And if you've been the victim of a scam, please click the link in the description below to speak to us about your case today. Now, today, I want to address probably the biggest challenge in fighting crypto scams, which is that there is a very big difference between the realities and the ideology of blockchain developers and those who work in the crypto industry versus the realities of scam victims. This is a huge, huge problem that we at my chargeback have been working nonstop on over the last, I don't know, several years at least. Uh, let's start here. All right. This is how blockchain developers and people in the crypto world see this. They see it like this. Why would anybody scam using crypto? You can just follow it in the blockchain. Well, that would be true. But what, what do you do about that? All right. Oh, I want you to think about this. All right. What you have just described is like watching a man steal a woman's purse. And you watched them run a half a mile away into a building. Okay, you saw where they went with it. You might even know that they stopped in the lobby to buy a candy bar. You know, using it. But you haven't really addressed how to give it back or anything like that. You don't know who it is. You don't want to say who it is. Or you do know who it is and you don't want to say who it is. Now, sometimes, all right, sometimes when it's convenient, Crypto platforms will do each other a salad, all right? There's a bridge hack on one of the true DeFi protocols. They move the money to Binance. And Binance says, you know what, buddy? Relax. I'm going to do you a solid. I'm going to freeze their money, and I'm just going to take it away. All right? They'll do that for their co-industrialists. They want, you know, to get back into the U.S.? All right, Fine. North Korean hackers stole $4.4 billion in, in uh, crypto? No problem. We'll get that $4.4 billion to the U.S. government. Again, when it suits their agenda and it's inside the blockchain. But most of their approach has directly to do with scam prevention. You see, it's easy to identify the stuff in the blockchain. It's easy to see when they are engaging in various criminal-like behavior inside the blockchain, all right? That for them is no problem, all right? Prevention, there's a technology out called ZK, Zero Knowledge, which is kind of the crypto world's hopeful solution in their eyes to being AML compliant, that's anti-money laundering, all right? And that's a program that will say, okay, this guy's driver's license or his passport, or we only got no offenses. Now, here's the thing. If you're a crypto scam victim, well, it's very nice that the guy's uh, license is real. But who is he and how do I get the money back from him? All right. Now, this is where we run into the part where the DeFi world is speaking about apples and crypto scam victims are speaking about oranges. All right. So let's get back to our example. Right. A man has taken a woman's purse. He's run half a mile away into an apartment building. Okay. All right. Now, let's say you got your blockchain forensics in hand, which we can provide you with. And you go over to the concierge and you say, hey, listen. I can show you that this guy took my purse and he is in this building. Who is he? I want to go, you know, deal with this. And the concierge says to you, listen, buddy, we only answer to the cops. As far as I'm concerned, you're trespassing. The building, of course, being an analogy for a CFI exchange, which is where most scammers will go to because only CFI exchanges have off ramps, right? But they also collect KYC info. That's know your customer, all right? Their names, their IDs, a photo ID, all right, email stuff, normal stuff, okay? So, they broke a few crypto rules, which is like, you know, 
everything about uber privacy and anonymity, just this absurd libertarian idea of how finance works. They broke those rules. That's our metaphorical apartment building. So you say, all right, you know what? Fine. All right, you walk back over. You go into your city because the scammer crossed the city line into the next suburb over. And you go to your police. This could go two ways. They could do what they're supposed to do, and they say, yeah, sure, we'll go over there and we'll get this guy's name, and then, you know, it will be pursued from there, or, you know, the correct path will be pursued from there. Or they're going to look at you and they're going to say, so let me get this straight. You were running around, whirling your purse, screaming, I have cash, I have cash, I have cash, look at me, I have cash, and then somebody went and grabbed it from you, and ran into somewhere that's out of our jurisdiction, and you want us to go see who it is. Now, that's usually where, once again, somebody like us has to intervene and talk to the police, which we do all the time. Ask our chief of crypto investigations, Evan Spicer. The guy lives on the phone in conferences with detectives from around the globe, all right? Work with, I don't know, 450, 500 law enforcement units across the globe okay this is a challenge that you as a scam victim have because as a scam victim what you want to know is okay who is it and how does it come back into my possession all right that's very nice that's very nice that you could show everything and you could show where it went and you could show that the guy went and decided to start buying uh snickers and twix and butterfingers and if he likes elijah reese's i really like reese's but that doesn't matter. How does it come back to me? And this is where the blockchain and the people in that world have come up short. You see, never have they thought to address what happens after the scam. Not just in KYC submission, but in terms of getting money back into people's possession. All right? Could there be a scenario in which new tokens are generated from the blockchain in the form of an NFT that can be cashed out could there be a scenario in which an ombudsman could step in and say to said apartment building you're going to give that lady back her purse all right now let me tell you the world of DeFi would be loath to have a scenario in which an ombudsman can do that they do it with bank wires they do it with credit cards they do it with banks all right and we know that a lot of these crypto platforms, many to their own fault because it nearly collapsed the whole thing, behave exactly like banks. But they would be loath to have that happen. But the bigger idea is that they've been unwilling to address it. And likewise, that scam victims are not willing to speak the la same language as the blockchain and acknowledge its complexities. It is not the same thing as traditional finance, and it has its own nuances. And you have to learn about it, and you have to learn to speak their language. So if we could get to the point where scam victims and the blockchain language, or the blockchain developers, could talk about apples and apples as opposed to apples and oranges, then we have real solutions where people can go and fight crypto scams more effectively. Folks, that's going to wrap it up for today. If you've been the victim of a scam, please click the link in the description below. And if you just enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And if you want to buy me Reese's, I'm not opposed to it. I've been Elijah. We'll see you next time.